and welcome to On the Patio with Mr. D. Hey, for those of you that follow my channel, y'all know that I own six different advanced element kayak inflatables. But I also own one hard shell kayak, and it is the Hobie Compass with the uh, Mirage 180 drive. And it's a really cool boat, but the problem is in Florida water, a lot of the streams and, and uh, creeks and rivers and stuff like that that I do my paddling places reviews on, uh, it's too shallow. And I get hung up a lot using the Mirage Compass. However, when I'm on big open lakes or on the ocean or in the Gulf or something like that, uh, the Hobie uh, pedal drive system works phenomenal. It's outstanding. But again, for those shallow waters all the way through these different rivers and streams and stuff like that, it gets hung up a lot. Uh, it happened just the other day. I was doing, uh, what was it, Tamarock 2 video, and I got hung up twice. Uh, one on a submerged log where the paddle drive, I was apparently in the upstroke, and then when it came down, it locked in between a tree that I couldn't see, and it was underwater. It stopped me dead cold. I had to pull the drive out, all that kind of stuff like that. So anyway, I've had this, and it's, it's a nice kayak. I have a lot of fun with it when I know I'm going out into uh, deep ocean water or going out into, like, uh, phosphate mines because they're really deep. Uh, you normally don't have any shallow issues that you have to deal with with the Mirage Drive. However, one of the things I have noticed, and I've only had this thing about a year and a half, I guess, or something like that, uh, it takes a beating. Now, if you look at the hull, the way the hull is designed on the Hobie, the, the two outside channels like this, and then they have another one like this, but it's lower. The outside uh, part of the hull is higher than the center. And then the nose, or forward, and the aft. Now on the aft, Hobie was smart enough to put a skid plate on it, which is removable and replaceable, so you can take it off and replace it if it gets chewed up. However, those two outside part of the hull is very susceptible to damage. And I looked at it uh, the other day and I said, wow, man, I'm taking a lot of nose damage and a lot of the outside part of the hull is really getting tore up, hitting rocks and, and shale and, you know, concrete uh, launch ramps and all that kind of stuff. So I got to figure out how I'm going to fix this. So I started doing some research on this thing and uh, I looked at Easy Keel and I looked at uh, videos on uh, the Flex Seal tape stuff that's too soft. It just gets tore up too easy. Then I was looking at another one with Gorilla Tape, and I said, wow, Gorilla Tape's kind of a cool idea. And then I looked at this other one where a guy took, I think it was three inch PVC, cut it down the middle, heated it, did all this kind of crazy stuff, and then adhered it to the forward and aft, but that wouldn't take care of my outside hull problems. So I said, wow, what am I gonna do on this thing? Now, Easy Kill is, is a, a, a good product, but man, that stuff is expensive. So I was watching this video the other day a guy used a simple bicycle inner tube along with the three inch wide Gorilla Tape. You know, I thought about this thing and I says, wow, I could probably use that idea uh, and I'm gonna expand upon it a little bit more than that uh, to make it to where it fits into to what I wanna do. And people that know me very well know that everything has to be aesthetically pleasing for me or I'm gonna rip it off and start all over again. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take on this project today. And just a second guys, I'm gonna break down what supplies and equipment is required to uh, make this particular repair and mod. And uh, then we're gonna go ahead and go through the mod itself. Uh, I'll be videotaping that. Uh, a lot of it will be doing uh, in a fast uh, forward type of uh, video because a lot of it's repetition. But when I get down to some intricate details of what I'm trying to accomplish, then I'll slow it down to real time. So hey, why don't we get into this thing? Now the items you're gonna need for this particular uh, project is isoprol alcohol, a pair of scissors, uh, a pretty big spoon, metal spoon, your marine glue, a very sharp uh, knife or exacto knife, a microfiber cloth, uh, an inexpensive bicycle tube, the three inch Gorilla Tape, and an orbital sander. And that's what you're gonna need as far as uh, supplies for this particular project. So, hey, let's get this thing started. Well guys, what I'm gonna do now 
is take my orbital sander and it has 220 grit uh, paper on it and I'm gonna lightly hit these these gouges that I've got here and go ahead and clean them up on the bow and the stern I've got just a little bit right here but I'm still going to be adding uh, the tape to this and to the front end and using the inner tube I'm going to talk about that and show that in detail so let's go ahead and get the, uh, the sanding portion done. That'll only take a couple minutes. All right, the next step in this process is, is kind of unique. I saw this done on a, a YouTube. Like I said, I watched a lot of uh, keel protecting videos and all the different ideas that were out there. And one, this guy, he, he actually took a bicycle inner tube, and, and this is really cool. Anyway, all I'm doing right now is just splitting it at the seam until I get an approximated length that I want. I don't know what that is yet, so I'm going to go check that in a minute. But it won't be that long. But what this does, because uh, this is going to be the base of the, uh, on the keel, and this is going to be the base area where I set it down, it'll act like a, a, a rubber cushion and then you gorilla tape over the top of it, trim it all up, make it look nice. So that's basically where we're going. So what I want to do here is just kind of finish up an approximate length for the bow. I need about 15 inches and then I just split the rubber like that. And this is where, now what I am going to do is on the inside they got this little powdery stuff. Again, this is where the isoprol alcohol comes in and I'm gonna go ahead and clean that all out. So this is ready for the bow right now. And what I'm gonna do is take it over there, pre-fit it, but I'm not gonna uh, do any of the adhesion yet because I wanna get the, uh, the stern one done. And that's really not gonna be that big a deal. But you wanna make this thing really, really nice. So one of the things I'm gonna do is make sure that the, the edges are straight and square. And then I'm gonna put a corner or a curve in each one starting at that upper seam and just kind of curve it around okay so you can see that's rounded right in here and I want to do the same thing in the back the reason for that it uh, reduces drag and also aesthetically pleasing so I'll do the same thing here just kind of cut around corner there and around corner here okay so this is get ready to get pre-fitted as you can see the inner tube has a seam that runs all the way here. It also is a great guide to center it up on the on the bow thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to cut out these little bit of chunks and I'll be adding adhesive there. So what I'm going to do basically is just snip that like this. Okay. Now what I want to do is get these seams to line up so when I add the adhesive it'll just sit like that. So it'll be really cool. So I'm going to do the other side the same way. Now Again, you, you know that I'm anal, so I'm going to fix that step because it's going to be actually like that. But it has a little bit of a step here, so I'm just going to trim that away. And that way it meets flush like that, so it'll be all good. Now I'm going to do the other side. What I want to do is add some adhesive right around here. And then preset this one up. And I'm not going to go and put the whole inner tube because if I ever have to replace it, uh, it won't be that hard to, to peel off. But if I did the whole thing, it might be a real problem. So I'm just kind of doing the outside here. Now I'm going to line up the center of the hole. Just like that. Put this down. And put this down. Okay, now I'm going to undo this back section. and put some adhesive. I don't recommend that you glue the whole thing down. I'm just gluing the edges. Okay, now you want to take your tape because it's going to spring back as you can see. So we want to stop that from happening. All right, now we're going to go down and work the aft. So hey, we'll be back in a minute. Well guys, what I've done is I've actually custom cut this. You can see the taper and that's to conform with the height here where it kind of graduates down 
but I'm noticing the damaged area never exceeds past here even though the tape is going to run all the way to the end. So I'm going to put the rubber piece right here using the same exact process as before. Okay, our next step, guys, is to uh, apply the Gorilla Tape. Now, actually, I'm going to go from back here to the front so I can put the tension that way. Okay, now. I wanna come right over the top of that rubber, just like that. And again, this is the first time I've done this, so I really don't know what troubles I'm gonna run into here. But right now, it's not really that bad, I think. Once I get this cut and this cut. The aft side and get that taped up and this project will be complete. We're going to do exactly the same thing. Remove these pieces of tape. I noticed one thing here. By adding the strip of glue onto the top surface, actually help this thing just sit there better. Okay, so all we gotta do now is just add the tape. Well, hey guys, uh, I had this project all done, but then I got to be honest with you, I didn't like the way the front uh, came out. And this is the next day. Uh, I had the video all done and, and I had uh, my mindset for a settle for, you know, I couldn't do it. I stripped off the whole front end. Uh, the pontoons uh, were fine and the aft keel was fine but the front one aesthetically was not pleasing. Plus I had where it was running up uh, on the bend, I had it running up way too high. So I just tore it all off this morning and redid it. One of the things I didn't do yesterday that I should have done was applied the heat gun to all the tape down uh, areas. Now I did that today. Uh, you gotta be careful with that. Make sure you don't get it too hot because it'll kind of mess up that uh, Gorilla Tape a little bit, but just get it to where you can activate that adhesive, you're gonna get an extremely great bond. I'm real pleased with it now. Uh, I wasn't pleased with the end of it yesterday, and I knew that uh, I had to do something. So I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see you on the next one.